Jimbo's Garage. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Jimbo's Garage. Well, today I want to talk a little bit about welding table maintenance, and then I've got a little slight modification that I'd like to do, and we'll do that towards the end of this video. Uh, you know, I get a lot of comments in the comment section, Instagram, Facebook, and emails, and people ask me, it seems to be a regular question that comes up regularly. They, they ask me how I keep my welding table uh, so clean, how I keep it in good shape. Well, you know, it's, it's pretty important. This is a pretty big asset here in the shop. Uh, this particular table is five feet wide, 10 feet long, and it uh, is a, comes from weldtable.com. Now, it's just like anything. This is, a, like I said, a valuable tool for me here in the shop. It's just like a, a machinist with, with, with a lathe or a mill. Now, these are valuable tools to them, and they keep them in really good shape in order for their jobs to continue, continually work well. That's the same with a welder, you know. You want, your, you want your equipment to be A plus, so every time you do a job, everything is in really good shape. So uh, it's important to me uh, to keep this the way it is. And it takes me less than two minutes. Uh, at, it's a procedure that I go through that takes less than two minutes after every job to get this table in excellent shape and back to its original condition and ready for the next project. So let me show you uh, the first step I do. I'll take you through the, the different steps. Of course, it's gonna take longer than two minutes because we're making a video, but if you can imagine, if I just went through all of these steps, how quickly it is. So let me get the spring in, I'll show you the first step. Okay, I've backed you up a little bit so you get a little bit bigger shot of the table right here. But basically, um, when you do a lot of welding on here, and I noticed this right away, the first week I had the table, I noticed the first project that I did on here that I had some spatter and some BBs that were kind of adhered or stuck to the surface of the table. And I, I right away realized that, oh man, I can't have that. I gotta get these things off. So I looked around and the first thing I found, I found a couple, I found this uh, piece of five eighths by two inch flat bar stock, two pieces. And I've welded these things together, and that was a quick, down and dirty fix for the tool that I need to knock that off. So all they do is just go and swing this thing back and forth like this, and I go all over the table, all the way around. Now this takes about 20 seconds, 15, 20 seconds, and it's done. And that takes off about 99.9% .9 of any buildup BB spatter that might be on here. Uh, anything that it doesn't get, I just grab a chisel, a cold chisel like this, and just a slight tap of the hammer, and that'll knock that right off. And now you've got everything, you know, completely all the way around, you've got all that stuff knocked off. The next thing you do is I grab a brush, and I just brush off all of the, the grinding dust, which is on here right now. I've got a lot of grinding dust from the last video. And once I've gone around the table with this and knocked everything off, then I just a brush to brush everything clean. One thing I want to point out while we're talking about this, this is just something I made. Um, Jason from Fireball Tools, I noticed a couple weeks ago, um, I believe he, he's got a tool. He just created or made a tool. Uh, it's like a scraper. It basically does the same type of thing. Um, and he, so he's got something like that. So anything that you have would be heavy, flat, and sharp that would knock anything off would work. All right, let me get this brush. We'll brush all this dust off and then I'll show you the next step. All right, so just a little shop brush like this. And then once you take everything off, uh, all the BBs and spatters, just come along here with this brush and get all the dust off. Now this is from flat disc grinding or grinding all that stuff, so basically just brush everything off the table, all the way around. And now you've got a, uh, it's flat, the dust is off it, and so then I'll show you the next thing I do. All right, so the next thing is um, oftentimes when I'm doing a project, uh, you might see these layout marks. I've got a Sharpie, and I don't know if you can see it very well, but I've got them all over this table from this last project that I did. And so what I like to do once I get everything cleaned off is I like to take some, uh, I use acetone, uh, paint thinner, lacquer thinner, anything like that would probably work. And just get a, just get a rag and a little bit of acetone. Just be sure before you do that, that uh, you wear the right, uh, 
you know, gloves of protection. I use these rubber, these rubber gloves right here uh, for black dye, and they they work really nice for this application here. Just a little bit of acetone or whatever material you have, and that just takes off all your layout marks and any other kind of uh, you know marks that might be on the table, and just go along and just clean that off. Do that throughout the whole table. I'll show you a couple of different areas. We're gonna go through the whole thing, but I'll show you a couple of different areas and we'll get it cleaned up. All right, so here's a couple of looks like paint marks. I don't know I don't know how that got on there. Maybe it was on the metal or something that I had up here. Or maybe I was doing something. Anyways, it looked like a couple of uh, drops of what could be, you know, paint or something. Same thing, you know, you just wanna take and get all this stuff off the best you can. And it doesn't take much just to clean all this stuff off. I like everything just nice and clean. I don't want anything on here. I want to start fresh with my next project. All right, so once you go all over the table and get everything wiped off, now everything is nice and clean. A little last spot right here. All right, now you've got a flat, really clean surface. So the next thing I want to do is I want to protect the top. And what I do, it's got a couple of different uh, these are sure shots. These are these are really cool uh, uh, containers. You basically take the top off. You put any kind of lubricant you want in here. You fill this up to about 120, 100, 120 psi, and it provides a really nice clean uh, mist spray. It's great for coating all kinds of different things. I have uh, the red one is what I use for the for the surface of this. The green one is like a rust inhibitor. Uh, here's the product right here. Um, both of them are LPS products. Uh, this one right here is the rust inhibitor. I use that for stuff that uh, you know might be stored outside or getting close to the outside or gets a little bit of moisture. Uh, it puts a really nice coating on the metal surface and it keeps it from rusting. Uh, so I keep that in the green container right here. Uh, this stuff is pretty handy, works pretty good. And then the red container, so when I'm finished with my lathe or my mill or welding table, I cook, clean everything up and I put a nice little coat on the top of everything and kind of just wipe it down. This is a, uh, a greaseless lubricant and it seems to work the best for me. Uh, I've used several different things, you know, WD-40, is, is, I use that for years and then I had one of my viewers um, uh, recommend Gibbs lubricant. That he said that they use that in their shop all the time and, and that, that was fine too. Uh, but this ultimately um, is the best, by, and it also has a really good fragrance. It smells really good. This works out pretty good. So basically what happens is once everything is wiped down and nice and clean, I just go along the top right here and just get this cup of little mist right across the top of the table right here. It doesn't take much. Something just about like this right here. But all you need, it keeps a nice fine mist over the top. And then again, a rag, and just kind of wipe this off like this. And you can see that uh, it provides a nice, lubricated, shiny finish. And this table is ready to go for your next project. Perfectly clean, perfectly flat. Preserved well. And if you, if you do stuff like this to your table, and like I said, this only takes, this only takes literally a couple of minutes this whole process but if you do this this table is going to last a long time all right so i got a little modification i want to do to the table let me show you what that is and we'll get that done all right before we start this small little modification i want to do i want to point out one other thing uh, one of the modifications that i made to this table when i first got it was these trays right here uh, I've got three of them underneath here to stop all the debris, the, the slag, and the grinding dust that may fall through the table. I, did not, I didn't want it to get on any of the tools underneath, so I made these pans here, 
and all that debris falls in here. Now I've had this table for about two years now and I've emptied it one time and then, hey, I'm here doing a little bit of maintenance. I may as well get these three trays emptied right now. Here's what they look like. They go the full length of the table. It's about five feet and you can just see how much, how much dust and how much grinding material that uh, this thing has acquired. Uh, and this has probably been, this is probably about a year's worth of material right here. I mean, it's probably a half inch thick right there. So let's get these three trays, they get these things emptied out, then we'll go ahead and uh, start this other modification I want to do. All right, I got all three pans emptied out and cleaned off, and this is a uh, this is a good application for this uh, rust inhibitor. I'm just going to go ahead and just spray this on inside here. I'm going to do that to all three of them. A nice applicator. See, these things work really good. It's almost a must-have. You can put anything you want in it, any any kind of fluid, any kind of uh, stuff you want. It just puts out a really nice even spray. Pretty nice. All right. All right, so that's done. Shove these back in there. Be good to go for another year or so. Okay, so the last modification that I want to do to this table, or the last thing I want to do to this table here today, is a slight modification. Uh, when I got this table a couple years ago, the very first thing I noticed when I set it up is how sharp the edge of this table is all the way around. It is almost razor blade sharp all the way around. I noticed it immediately and I thought to myself, is this going to be a problem? I mean, I could cut myself or, or it is so, it, it's so sharp uh, that um, it's almost scary. So if I rub my hand too many times across this edge right here, it'll almost, it'll almost break the skin. That, that's how sharp it is. So I don't really see any benefit. I've had this table for two years now, and I don't really see any benefit of having that sharp of an edge on here. So my thought is, is I want to put a slight chamfer on this edge, nothing major, about a 16th of an inch, just something to take this edge off. That's all I'm looking to do. I don't think it's going to hurt the performance of the table, at least the way I used it. I haven't seen any uh, need that I need to have uh, this perfectly sharp edge all the way around and I think it's just gonna it's just gonna make it a better deal and then lessen the chance of me actually uh, cutting myself or anything it, it is really sharp I'm gonna bring you in and take a, a show you try to show you a closer look at it I don't know that you'll be able to see uh, just how sharp it is and then I'm gonna show you the little tool we're gonna use to do it all right so let's check this out Okay, well I really can't get in here too close. I, I don't think you can really see uh, the justice of, of how of how sharp it really is. But, you know, like I, like I was saying, it doesn't take much. I just rub my thumb on here and a couple more like that. Probably darn near almost cut my skin. So I, I wish I could just show you how sharp it is. But uh, anyways, this is about the best picture I can give you. So I'm going to show you what we're going to use. We're going we're gonna to just put about a sixteenth of an inch chamfer on this edge right here all the way around the table and I think that's going to be uh, much safer and it's going to look much nicer. So let me show you what we're going to use. Okay, so what I got right here is a, a little, little palm held chamfering tool. It's air driven. I, I got this at KBC Tools. I, I, have, a, I have a facility uh, you know very close to my house right here and uh, I mean it's like a candy store for machinists that they, they got everything in there and it's just hard for me to uh, resist some things sometimes but uh, this thing looked pretty handy um, uh, there's no it's relatively new so I couldn't really find a name on it it's available at my facility here in uh, in in Orange County I don't know if it's at all facilities right now they got KBC has uh, stores all around the United States and Canada but uh, anyways it's got a small little table to it and it's got some um, uh, carbide inserts that you can change out if you if they do get dull they also have those uh, I think it's going to be a perfect uh, uh, 
perfect tool for what I'm gonna use it for is taking this edge off all the way around the table. And also too, we'll, we'll give it a try on some pipe. We'll de deburr some pipe or, or some flat bar stock and just see how well it works on that as well. It is adjustable. Uh, this radius right here goes to about an eighth inch max and then it retracts down to zero. So I, I've got this adjusted for about a 16th of an inch. So it's a very slight little chamfer that we're gonna put on the edge of the table here. So uh, let's give this thing a try and see how it works. Okay, so that worked out just the way I was hoping. I got a nice little bevel around the outside of my welding table. I gotta say the chamfering tool uh, worked pretty good for that. It's not much, it's only about a 16th of an inch, so it knocked that edge off, but yet it's a nice smooth finish. I also tried it on these uh, round pipes right here, inside, outside bevels, super clean, super efficient, worked really well, and also went around this aluminum plate as well. It's a good little, good little tool to have. I'm looking forward to be using it here in the shop more. In terms of uh, the welding table maintenance, I hope that uh, this answers the questions that uh, you guys may have had about how I keep my table nice and fresh and new looking. Uh, you know, any lubricant or any product that you may have will work. These are the products that I use. I like them. They work well. I got them at KBC Tool. Uh, if you're interested, I'll have a link in the description below for some discount opportunities. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. See you next time on Jimbo's Garage.